FEMA Administrator Craig Fugate will be in Connecticut today, touring damaged areas of Milford, Fairfield, Bridgeport, Norwalk. And with him on that tour will be Congressman Jim Himes, who joins us live on our news line now. Congressman, thanks for joining us. What does the state hope to get from FEMA? Well, as you just heard from uh, Governor Cuomo in that uh, clip, uh, all of us are concerned that FEMA fully understand the magnitude of the uh, rebuilding challenge that we face. And not just the rebuilding challenge, but, you know, the enormous amount of money that was put out by municipalities and by counties in places like New Jersey uh, to, uh, to, to, to make safe the situation after Sandy um, and, and, and to rebuild. Um, you know, like every other region in the country, our region is one that has been hit economically hard. So, should uh, taxpayers in these communities be forced to pay uh, for the municipal expenses as well as their own rebuilding expenses? It puts a dramatic uh, amount of pressure on the economy here. So our hope is mainly that we get an opportunity to uh, to, to show Administrator uh, uh, Fugate, you know, the extent of the damage and the size of the uh, of the geographical footprint that this storm hit. So about a month in now, how would you describe the recovery? Which areas need the most help? Well, fortunately, here in Connecticut, we were not hit as hard as uh, certain areas of New York and New Jersey. We were very lucky in that we had minimal loss of life, less so than in New York and New Jersey. Uh, but we did sustain quite a bit of property damage. Um, and so, again, concentrated in my district, which is uh, more or less Fairfield County, uh, we, we, we sustained actually much more uh, uh, significant damage than we saw during Hurricane Irene. Congressman Jim Himes of Connecticut, let's switch gears and uh, talk about this fiscal cliff, the uh, talks restarting in Washington this week. You've said you don't actually like the term fiscal cliff. Why? Well, um, you know, it's sort of a, a, a minor point, but a fiscal cliff sort of implies that if you fall off it, you're you're in a world of catastrophe. And as a result, uh, you know, everybody is looking at December 31st as this absolute hardened, uh, fast deadline behind which is total catastrophe. That's actually not the case. If you actually read the reports written by the Congressional Budget Office and by any of the economists who have looked at the effect of the fiscal cliff, there's no doubt that we want to avoid it. We absolutely positively want to avoid it. And in fact, if we had a, you know, a, a less contentious and partisan form of government, we might have had a plan already. However, the fact is that the sun rises on January 2nd, and the effects of the fiscal cliff, the economic effects, kick in over time. Um, so unfortunately, you know, I think now expectations are that if we don't have a deal on January 1st, we're, you know, in a world of severe catastrophe. That's, that's just not true. Now, that doesn't mean I'm looking for more time or, like, this should be postponed, but, you know, sometimes when people think uh, perception shape reality. So, uh, but nonetheless, I remember Remain optimistic that a deal gets done here. It'll be a little messy along the way, but I do think a deal will get done. Any quickly, any areas you think Democrats and Republicans can agree on? You want to tell us? Well, um, you know, uh, there's obviously been pretty significant disagreement over uh, both taxes and entitlement reform. But part of the reason I'm optimistic is that after the election, you heard Speaker Boehner uh, say that new revenue, new taxes were on the table. Uh, and you've heard the uh, president be, uh, uh, you know, um, constructive on the need to uh, fairly reform um, programs like Medicare and Social Security. So you see you see basically hands being reached across the aisle for. Uh, towards a deal. All right. Connecticut Congressman uh, Jim Hines, we appreciate your time this morning. Thank you. Thanks so much.